Okay, so I'm going to do thermal vision here. I'm just in the uh, third person starter template with the content. I've uh, just created a couple base materials, as you can see here. That's just stone. UVs don't matter. Anyways, so the first thing is uh, this is actually going to be driven off of post processing. So we're going to use this post processing volume here, and uh, we'll just start it off actually by creating the material for this, which uh, I like prefixing all this thermal, save it. Uh, yeah, let's bring this in here, set the material domain, post process. We'll just use scene texture for now. It's kind of complain because you can't use that one. Let's use post process input. Okay, so I save that. Come back. Go to post processing. Choose asset reference. I already have it selected, so I'm just inputting it there. Unbound is true, and th this way I don't have to be in the box. So that will be that actually, and to show you that it does work, I'll switch it to something else. Let's go diffuse. And you see now I have this kind of weird non-lit version. Anyways. So we'll get back to that. Um, one of the things that we're going to need to do to actually get this, um, first we need to separate what's character and what's not, because our characters and our heat generators uh, need to be separated. So the easiest way to do that is actually in the, the render settings for your, will I be able to get to it? Yes. Um, there's a checkbox under rendering called Render Custom Depth Pass. Maybe check that to yes. Um, it, it'll save it into a whole new depth pass, which I'm going to show you in the, the post processing volume here. I'll try to shrink this. So in here we have custom, no, well, custom stencil will kind of do the same thing, but uh, I'm looking for. Where is it? Custom depth. So this is going to be way too bright here, but we can kind of stomp this down. Usually a division. Because th this is outputting in world units. That's why it's going to look a little weird. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, alright, so there you go. See, so now it's, now it's showing or stenciling just the characters. If uh, I'm going to turn this off for a second, so I can go to basically any mesh and add it to this uh, depth, this custom depth pass here, which I'm going to do. I'm going to use this basically as an example of of how to add something else that's maybe not a character. So we're going to play with that. Um, anyways, so now that we have a, a custom depth here, I'm going to bring this back. We're going to use this and the actual depth map, which is for the entire scene here. That, that's This one is under... Oh, I can't barely see these. Scene depth. So this will be everything else. If this makes sense. Here, let me put our post processes on yeah. So yeah, now, now you see how you're getting the, the depth. The, the brighter the color, basically, the farther away it is from the camera. So we're going to basically take the difference between <coughs> the natural scene depth and our custom depth pass to create kind of a mask here. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. We're, first, we're going to just grab the R channel. I mean, it's, it's grayscale, so this way, instead of dealing with a 
float three or float four, we, we just have a single value here. And then I'm going to add to the seam depth so that it's it's inherently different than whatever's coming through here because e even the character that are on the custom depth here are still going to have the same values. So this way we have an absolutely different value. Um, it basically is increasing what the depth output is just by one, which isn't much, but it's enough to make it different than um, what the output is. So I'm going to take that one, take B here, and um, just for, for fun, I'm, I'm going to use a three, uh, a vector three here. So let's call this one blue and this one red. So if the natural seam depth is larger than the custom depth, which by increasing it, it should always be, it's going to output blue. Um, if it's not, it's going to output red. And if we save that there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, see? Now all of our characters are outlined in blue, which is what we want. So now we have a mask, basically. We know what's on the custom depth pass and what's not. But in order to really make this useful, I mean, we've lost every detail in the scene, we're going to need to find a way to bring back some of the original uh, coloring, basically. So, with this in mind, now I know how to stencil it. I can basically just um, get rid of this here. I'm going to get rid of these two because I, I only really actually need... Um, no, I think this one's actually supposed to be zero. No, that was right, actually. Um... I basically just only want a zero or one value here, so I can power alert, and that was inverted. Whoopsie daisies. So I want all, all, anything that's generating heat to be white, and anything that's not to be black. Now with this in mind, I can I can now power alert, or I could actually just input from here as well. Um, but now we need to kind of regain, and actually I, I'm going to try it this way. I'm, just gonna try to go directly into there. And we'll see if it works. This isn't actually the way I originally did it, so we're having uh, we're having fun here. Uh, so if I go post process input here, put this one in there. Is that right? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, black, I guess. Four, not three. There we go. Oh, sorry, I was in the other screen there. The, I basically just put post process the original input into A, so now our characters are only in the original. Um, actually, I kind of want to switch that. Let's make our characters just red, I guess, and everything else to its normal. So ta-da, we have this, which is the beginnings of something good. Um, to really kind of bring together um, this kind of height or this uh, heat thing, um, if we open up Chrome here, I think this, yeah, you just, so I'm good. you'll see how things that are hotter generally come out as this red uh, up to white here. You can see it, this effect here. And anything that's cooler should be blue, basically. And in order for us to do that, I'm going to actually use a texture lookup. Uh, much like a LUT works, L-U-T. Um, I should have one. I, I made one earlier in, in Photoshop, and this is just a, let me put it here. This is just a gradient image. Um, as you can see here, it's just 512 wide, eight pixels high, um, cool being on the left, hot being on the right. I just used the 
gradient tool. And uh, so, yeah, just pick the colors very specifically. Halfway is like green, you see. So, let's put this actually to work. Where is my material? Uh, post process. Let that save that. Drag this into here. So, now we're going to have a, a temp lookup basically. And if I was to, for instance, do and let's make this one one. Well, that did something quite weird. Um, what am I missing here? I don't think it's this. That is a very strange effect that's going on there. Uh, we're gonna come back to that. But essentially, I need this first. So I'm going to go back to the way I originally was doing it. That's the one. Sorry, I'm, conf I'm confusing myself a little bit here. Yeah, okay. Alright, I don't want an add in bundle these up nice, stick these in a comment, I'm called uh, mask out heat generators, and keep this over here. So now, I'm going to grab the scene, uh, the actual output here, and I'm also going to grab the base color, this one I think will work. The reason why I'm doing this is because, as you noticed in the thermal, there's no real lighting. You're not seeing a lot of shadows. Like this one has a little bit, but it's not as pronounced as you would normally get with your general lighting scheme. So for that, I'm going to kind of make a mixture of these. So I'm with this non-shadowed version, I'm going to uh, basically take the shadows out of this one to kind of give me a more flat... Uh, more flat texture. So I'm actually going to multiply this one. I'm only going to use 20% of the shadows here and fill the remaining 80% with the non-shadow. A, hold down A and click is add. And with this combined, I should have done this closer to the output, huh? With this combined, I should have a fairly flat looking, but still kind of, yeah. It's still got kind of some of the depth there. Alright, so with that done, next thing I'm going to do is probably take this as a component mask here. Do I want to do that? Yes. I'm only going to take the red. Um, i just move this closer so I can show you guys. While I'm doing this, so now I have this kind of grayscale here. It's actually fairly good, uh, just by itself. And uh, it's, because my scene is actually so gray, I might not need to do much, but what I'm going to do is clamp it to five. So in eventuality, when we use this, bring this texture in, it'll never surpass halfway, so that all of our background is never really going to generate heat, no, to, regardless of how much, <coughs> how light the, the textures or materials are. So with that in mind, clamping to 0.5, save, save. 
Yeah, so I'm not getting it. Even the sun up there is still clamped. Which is good. That's what I want. Um, I don't have a great way to fix the sun, so you're kind of on your own on that one. Uh, but anyways, so with this in mind, uh, now I need to find a way to actually get look up the, the texture here. So for this, I'm going to append a vector to turn it into a 2D. I'm just going to add halfway down the Y and hope that this works. Three to two. Who's got the three to two? Should only be a single, right? Did somebody bring it up to RGB again? No. What's going on here? It's weird that that zero is it's gonna worry me. Yeah, I mean that's, that's fine, I guess. No, oh, that is already two, I guess. Works for me. That's still way too flat, but I think that has to do with this. How dark these textures are, basically. That's what I'm thinking. Um, there's ways you can change that. We could, for instance, use power, increase the contrast. Did the complete opposite. Drop the contrast, in, maybe. A little too much. Yeah, alright, we'll live with that, right? Cool. So, this is our output. For the cold, basically. By the way, do I, can I just get away with just doing this? Yes. All right. And we know our mask. So what we're going to do actually is, where this is clamped, we're going to do another add. And we're going to add 0.5. which should give us now from middle up, as you see here. This post-process is being weird. I think this sometimes helps. Yeah. So this is going to be basically our, our heated version. And so now all we have to do is lerp between cold and hot and use that as the texture and use our mask finally which was giving us only white is heat generators and combined we have that so that looks Interesting, to say the least. For the most part, we have the basics, but this isn't this isn't great. 
and I think part of it is it's, it's showing too much of these details. Um, when you look at real thermal, you see there's kind of a core heatness and it cools out as they get to the edge here, and we're not getting that with this. You see, like for some reason, his neck is cold, but his his body's not. You know, that's that's weird. So what we're actually going to do for that is make kind of a master material that's going to use Fresnel. And this this is going to look uh, pretty cool. So I'm going to use a material to function for this. So a material function, and I'm going to call this thermal switch. Could have called it blend because that's really actually what we're doing. And for this, I'm also going to use a uh, material parameter collection, MPC. I just call this global, whatever. And in here, I'm going to use a scholar parameter, which is a value between zero and one, and call this thermal switch. And uh, one will be on, so I'm going to default that for now. Now we're going to go into our function here. We're going to bring in our our uh, MP our material parameter collection. We're going to use a switch. Then I'm going to use a blend uh, material blend layer blend simple. Basically, what this does is takes base material in, takes another material on top of it, and uh, does an alpha, uh, much like a lerp. So we already have a thermal switch here. The only thing we need to do is supply a base material and our new, when it's thermal, what does it look like? To get this done, I'm going to do a uh, function input, is it this material, function input type material attributes, Let's call this base material, base materials in, um, it's going to bug you about previews, so we're just going to do this right off the bat. I think it's make, yeah, make material attributes. And I just want to set some random color here. Um, it's never going to use this in the actual functions, so you're not really going to have a problem. See, now it's going to bug about a top material. So for this, we're going to create another function input that's a material type, and we'll call this thermal material. But this one, we're actually going to use the preview value as default. So if you do not supply this pin, um, it's not going to be required this input, uh, and, and if, if you don't provide it, I'm, it's going to use a generated one from the function, which is pretty much exactly what we want. This way the function will take over what thermal looks like by default, but if you really want to customize how that looks, then you can, you, you can plug it in, and I'll show you that later when we get to uh, doing that. So. For, for the thermal look, I basically, first of all, I, I want to get rid of as much uh, lighting as possible here. There's no real way to, to set the switch there. By the way, expose to library, click back. This way it's uh, you can find it easy from other materials. Anyways, now we're going to use uh, Fresnel. We're going to pipe this into not normal, I mean uh, emission. And you'll see we start getting this. Uh, white on the outside, dark on the inside. I'm going to drop this down to one exponent value here. This way, yeah, see, we get much smoother. Actually, Yeah, I like that. See, now it's got a much softer feel to it. Yeah, I, I think I can live with that. 
Um, something that makes uh, Fresnels look even better is supplying a normal. So again, I'm going to do a function input here. Uh, this can go ahead and be a texture 2D, I believe. No, okay, it wants a float vector 3, I believe, right? Yes. But you can't just do... Um, What am I thinking? You, you can't just plug in a regular normal map into this. Um, it wants to be in world space. This wants world space. This wants, or this outputs tangent. So we're going to actually have to use a transform here. Vector ops transformed. And I think by default now in, in 416, it's already set, but you can check here. Source is tangent, correct? Destination world. And if uh, you Again, if, if you don't provide one, I don't want this required, so I'm going to supply a, uh, basically it's just a blue, which would just be a you know, blank normal value. And if we save this up, should be no errors, and everything's fine, still looks good. So this is, this is the value that's driving everything uh, through this function. And now we can use this actually in uh, other materials. So I'm going to use this level geometry material I made, which is the one you're seeing on uh, this kind of tiley octagon brick thing. So to make good use of this, I'm actually going to adjust, I'm going to switch this from its standard to use material attributes, which will basically just pack it down into this one single material pin here. And then with that in mind, I'm going to type in, there's our material function we created up here. Plug this into the base. It's going to complain that it's missing the base material. No problem. We're going to use make material instance. And then we plug in our material, just like that. This one I think is ambient. Also, since we have a normal map, and you're going to see this here, see how it's just still plain? If we plug in our normals, which I forgot to label, but it would be this one. In fact, I'm going to go and do that. Rename this uh, thermal normals. Save. Thermal normals. Now, see, it's taking in consideration the normal map. Much nicer, huh? So if we save this, it's immediately going to apply to uh, everything in the, the level. So that's why it might take a little while for it. Nope. And uh, there we go. Now, now it's kind of smoothing out a bit. Normals are still a little, it's less raggedy than it was. Now if we also apply this to our character material, um, which I'm going to have to go find, I think body is the base one. Yeah. See, they're already doing these kind of blend things, so this makes it even easier. We're just going to use thermal switch. Output this. Base material. Use this. And they have a nice normal map here. So we're going to go ahead and use that. If we save that one. changes, saving assets, it's kind of lagging out here, uh, but this uh, this should make a much more friendly type here. So if we take a look, well, we have a slight problem, it's working backwards, 
because the Fresnel is brightest on the outside. No problem. We'll just give an old uh, flipperoo to this. Right, uh, right in here, I think. Let's try it like this. Good old flip. Whoa. Wrong way. Maybe not there. Try after the lurp, maybe? Uh, yes, but no. Wrong, wrong direction. Interesting. I forgot where I put it. Is it there? You know what? Let's just actually just preview this. And then I'll think about <laughs> where it went wrong here. Okay. That's one minus. I know it's really hard to see, but I can kind of make out some of this stuff. Now I gotta think about this. This is basically, I'm trying to do a 1 minus, but yeah, to this level. But this is riding very close to the middle green. So. I'm thinking I might want to adjust. Do I want to? I don't know. We're going to find out here. Someone tells me this is going to turn the whole world green. Uh, yeah. But not terribly. So I guess let's just stomp this down a even further by doing that. Yeah. Sure. Maybe two thirds. Yeah, all right. And um, this guy's still not right. So for that. Because this should be up into the range of one. So now I think we can get away with a, a one minus here. Which we can, but. This may not be the most efficient algorithm. I'm probably 
missing something quite obvious, but uh, we're going to be good with it. Yeah, there you go. Is this thing in there? Oh, it's physics. Yeah, but uh, I think it's because it's material is, is off. So we're gonna go. Actually, this this should be a good good example of showing you um, when you might want to modify the thermal material. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think this is metallic roughness base color. So since white, or actually the inversion of white, is uh, how bright it's going to be, I'm actually going to play with the Fresnel here to produce something that's not quite uh, white on the edges. That's maybe only gray, so it's not as hot as the body. Um, at least that's my hope there. I can even adjust, yeah, so the fall off is a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Uh, I want more more blending, but. Yeah, okay. And then, uh, say it's only 60%. Uh, Trying to get this white color down. Yeah, what happens if I do that? Does that actually make it brighter? That, that does actually make it hotter. I want the inversion of that. So I actually want. Clamp. So I should make this cooler because I'm doing the inversion actually. The, the brighter this is, the colder it is. Right? Yeah. But um, either way, that's basically how thermal, in uh, a general sense, works. And uh, in case you're wondering, since we have a uh, material parameter switch and it's all being done off this function. Um, if we switch this to zero, it, it essentially turns off all these Fresnels, uh, which gives us this crappy solid version here. But um, if you turn off the post process as well, which if you're doing this in, in blueprints, Basically, if you turn off the post process and the material function, then you come back to normal. And in blueprints, you can do that. You can drive this very easily. Yeah, so, so if it was attached to, if the post process settings were actually in the camera, um, it would probably work a little bit easier for your player. But yeah, you can see it it works. Pretty nicely, I think. And uh, anyways, going on forty minutes here, so 
Uh, thanks for watching, I guess.